So the title of my talk is Genome-Wide Analysis of EQTL in Breast Cancer. But really what I'm talking about today is the interaction between genotype and phenotype, more specifically the interaction between germline genotype and breast cancer phenotype. So the genome-wide association study is a widely used uh, method for investigating this inter um, relationship between genotype and phenotype on a genomic scale. Uh, breast cancer has been uh, widely studied with the genome-wide association study. And if we look at the genome-wide association study catalog, we see um, about 50 um, risk alleles which predict a risk of breast cancer. A question you might ask is, how do we infer the mechanism of these risk alleles, or how do these, how do these alleles um, lead to an increased risk of breast cancer, and what's the means by which we can understand how um, variation at these lo loci has a functional consequence. Using the EQTL framework, uh, we treat gene expression as a phenotype um, using uh, gene expression profiling methods such as RNA-seq or microarray. Um, we can easily measure tens of thousands of features simultaneously, and this facilitates the investigation of the functional consequences of genetic variants at these loci. So in our EQTL analysis, uh, consisted of three parts, our germline genotype data, our tumor gene expression data, and our ER status data. Um, this was from 382 TCGA invasive breast cancer cases um, from Caucasian individuals. Our germline SNP data came from an AFI-6 SNP array, and our expression came from an Agilent 244K custom array. Um, we took the about 1 million loci uh, from the AFI-6 array, and we imputed it to about 8 million loci for the analysis. So getting from 1 million SNPs to 8 million SNPs, like I said, is uh, done using imputation, wherein we estimate genotype or ungenotype markers using a genotyped reference panel. In this case, the 1,000 genomes uh, was our reference panel. So we used Beagle to infer haplotypes for unrelated individuals, and Minimac to implement the actual imputation. That got us to about 16 million SNPs. Uh, we then took the 8 million most variant. Uh, so here's a plot of um, the first two principal components of our genotype data, and our 382 cases came from the uh, red cluster you can see here. So we represented the interaction between um, gene expression and genotype with a linear model with parameters for um, genotype and ER status, which is our covariate. We used the R package matrix EQTL to implement the EQTL analysis. Um, matrix EQTL uses large matrix operations to optimize um, the testing for every SNP transcript pair, of which we had about 1.2 trillion, which is a lot. Um, and we did, um, along with using ER as a covariate, we also did EQTL detection in um, ER positive alone and ER negative alone. So of the about 8 million SNPs, we found that about 140,000 uh, of these were significant EQTL. Uh, we also found that none of the 51 um, breast cancer risk alleles from the GWAS catalog were detected as EQTL. So we see here that uh, there does not seem to be an association between risk allele status and EQTL status. So another way we can think about um, our results is if we think about this as a, a bipartite graph, wherein each EQTL can be represented as a loci pointing to a quantitative trait. Um, and if we think about it this way, we can um, compute the in degree of our quantitative traits, so how many um, loci per quantitative trait. Uh, the other way of thinking about it is out degree, so how many quantitative trait per loci. We can also look at connected regions of the graph, so which quantitative traits are connected to one, to one another through SNPs, et cetera. So here we have the in-degree distribution of our quantitative traits. Um, we see most of the transcripts have uh, one or two loci, which they interact with, and a small number of um, transcripts are interacting with a large number of loci. Here's the other side of that. Um, these are the out-degree distribution of the loci, and uh, we see the same sort of thing where a small number of uh, loci are interacting with a large number of transcripts. Uh, here are the quantitative traits with the highest in degree. 
Um, we see some interesting stuff. Um, prolactin is known to play a role in um, breast biology. MEN1 uh, has been implicated in a variety of cancers. So another way we can sort of visualize this is by taking a rolling mean of EQTLs across the genome, starting with genome 1 and going all the way to, or excuse me, chromosome 1, going all the way to uh, the X chromosome. So the last thing I wanted to talk about uh, were these ER dimorphic EQTLs. So like I said earlier, we ran the EQTL analysis in uh, ER positive alone and ER negative alone, as well as with ER as a covariate. So we found 32 EQTLs um, with an opposite sign of the interaction in the positive and the negative. And these are the six genes which uh, were the transcripts from these EQTLs. And uh, several of them seem to have roles with apoptosis, which I think uh, warrants further investigation. So finally, um, of the 1.2 trillion SNP transcript interactions, about uh, 375,000 EQTL were found. Um, we found that risk allele status really does not predict EQTL status, um, but that ER status can interact with the direction of an EQTL. Um, finally, it, it does seem that germline genotype can lend insight into uh, breast cancer phenotype. I'd like to thank my boss, Andy Beck, and from the Harvard School of Public Health, Aditi Hazra, Peter Kraft, John Quackenbush, and Connie Chen. If there's plenty of time, I'll take questions. <laughs> Thank you. Questions for Nicholas? Is there any correlation, uh, you know, between these SNPs that are identified and uh, when you do genomic uh, DNA and SNPs? I'm sorry? I mean, these are all obtained from expression profiling, right? The SNPs? Yeah. Are from, uh, yeah, SNP genes, I think. Yeah. Okay. So the, uh, the EQTLs that are dimorphic between ER positive and ER negative, were they generally going, like for example, for IGF-1 receptor, was that um, more highly expressed in the, in the ER negative? Um, or was there like a, a negative correlation or a positive correlation? Does it? Right, between like the minor allele. Yeah, what, what, yeah which direction was it versus ER positive versus ER negative on right. the sets of them? So were they consistent across? Or? Right, so uh, it, it seemed that um, most of the uh, apoptosis-related um, transcripts seems to be uh, lower in the, in the minor allele, in the ER negative, I believe, um, and then the converse in the ER positive. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, I think I got it. Okay, thanks. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Yeah. Matthew? Sure, I was very curious about your result, which is at least naively thinking, surprising, that the uh, germline risk alleles are not associated with EQTLs. Right. And you, do you think, it, does, does this suggest alternative hypotheses uh, for the role of these, these germline alleles in promoting cancer other than being modulators of expression? Right, so I think it's uh, entirely possible that um, these SNPs may lead to cancer, but then in cancer they do not predict um, any uh, change in expression, um, that seems to be probably the most likely result, but, yeah. I, I have a question. Um, I want to understand, did you use a adjacent normal tissue or the tumor tissue to look at the gene expression? Uh, gene expression is from a tumor tissue. So this could be affected by the stage of the tumor. Did you do analysis by stage? Uh, we didn't do analysis by stage. We really only broke it down by um, ER status, really, to keep the sample size large. But that, yeah, that certainly could uh, play a role. Okay. One last question. Um, <clears throat> yes, in the ER, uh, in the uh, case of ER-associated QTL, have you checked whether separating premenopausal or postmenopausal <laughs> cases could change things? Because actually, estrogen <coughs> levels vary before menopausal state, and that could affect gene expression. Yeah, no, that, that absolutely. Uh, we, haven't, we haven't looked at um, anything really besides ER status, but um, looking forward, yeah, there are a number of different covariates we could use. Hi. 
Thank you. Thank you Thanks very much.